All right, let's make haggis. Welcome to another episode of How to Make Dinner. I'm Paula and today I'm making vegetarian haggis. If any of you are freaked out about haggis because of all the weird animal parts that are in it, then this vegetarian haggis is for you. It is fairly straightforward, even though it is a little bit of a project. It's completely vegan. It's such a cozy thing to make for a warm dinner with mashed potatoes and turnips, or you can slap it onto a breakfast sandwich, or you can melt it onto a piece of toast with some cheese. Haggis is the best, and this vegetarian haggis is the haggis for everyone. I'm drinking wine, by the way. I have my box of wine behind me. I was never really exposed to haggis until I moved to Scotland in 2013. And when I got there, I realized that pretty much everybody eats the stuff. It's totally not a weird thing. It's very, very common. And I really, really quickly fell in love with it. Haggis is traditionally made with a lot of different organ meats. And if you're one of those meat eaters that think it's just really weird, I would say it's only as weird as like a sausage or a hot dog or anything else that uses, you know, questionable parts of the animal. <laughs> so if you're good with hot dogs and you're good with sausages, there's no reason why you shouldn't be good with haggis. If you aren't good with organ meats or animal products at all, then you should make vegetarian haggis. Because honestly, this vegetarian haggis recipe is basically indistinguishable from a normal traditional meat haggis, in my opinion. Especially when you get it onto a squishy bun with an egg and brown sauce, it's like, it's perfect. I love it. I'm a huge fan. So. Let's make it. First things first, I'm gonna start with an onion as per usual. Most things seem to start with onions. So just one medium onion and everything's gonna get blitzed up in a food processor so we don't need to be too fussed about chopping. And then I'm gonna get that into this food processor. I don't want a puree, but I do want it to be fairly finely chopped. Next, I have some pre-cooked steel cut oats here, also known as pinhead oats. And I've made this recipe with brown rice as well, and it really, really works well. But of course, oats is super traditional for haggis. So it's kind of nice to use the steel cut oats. Um, I cooked these a little bit differently than I would normally cook my oatmeal because I didn't want them to be super creamy and like, gluey i wanted them to be more just like a cooked grain so i basically cooked these steel cut oats the exact same way i would cook brown rice which is give it a little rinse and then put twice as much water as oats in a pot for half a cup of steel cut oats and one cup of water i used half a teaspoon of salt bring the whole thing to a boil turn it down to medium low and simmer for about 20 minutes with the lid on it just means that the oat grains stay a little bit more separate. It's less of a creamy porridge and it's more of just like a cooked grain. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, so now that I've got that, that's a cup of oats. I'm gonna dump in my onions. Next is black beans. So I'm using a whole cup of black beans and black beans are really good here because the color makes the haggis look kind of haggisy because haggis always has some like dark brown bits in it. So one cup of black beans going in the food processor. Grind that up. Again, I don't want a super smooth puree. I just want it to be like pretty, pretty well ground. Get that into the bowl with the onions and the oats. Next is the mushrooms. So I took 200 grams of regular button mushrooms and I added them to about two cups of water and brought them to a boil, reduced the heat to simmer and then simmered them for about 20 minutes. And you can cook these mushrooms any which way you want. I kind of just like that when you cook them in water, they produce a bit of mushroom broth, which is nice. But if you want a deeper mushroom flavor, you could saute them. I actually don't really want a deeper mushroom flavor because I don't want this haggis to taste like mushrooms. I want it to taste like haggis, obviously. I just like the moisture and the meatiness of the mushrooms. It really, really brings the whole haggis together. The whole, I guess it's like the whole hog. Uh. 
Into the mushrooms, I'm also going to add two tablespoons of ground flaxseed or flax meal. This is kind of filling in for eggs. It's gonna kind of help bind the mixture together. And then I'm also going to add two tablespoons of butter. In this case, I'm using plant-based butter or AKA margarine to keep it vegetarian and vegan. Have I already given my rant about plant-based? When I was in nutrition college in 2009, the term plant-based meant a diet based mainly on plants, kind of like a Michael Pollan style, you know, eat real food, mostly plants kind of deal. So that was like our name, like the name for the people who ate like a really veggie forward diet. So that's, you know, plant-based folks. Now the damn vegans have claimed the word plant-based as their own. They already had a name, it's called vegan. Who cares? I don't really care that much, whatever. As well as the flaxseed and the marge, I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of this mushroom broth to the mixer at this point. And then this I'm gonna grind till it's pretty smooth. doesn't matter if there are bits in there, but I'm just not fussed about it being like any particular texture. All right, so that's that. Okay, lastly, the spices. So I'm gonna add one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. And I know that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. It's a real peppery little number we're making here. I think black pepper is Definitely one of the more predominant flavors in haggis as I know it. And I should quickly say, I'm making haggis the way that I remember it and the way that I like it and I've had it in lots of places. I think that a lot of people will probably comment and say, that's not how you make haggis. This isn't how you eat it. These aren't the spices you use. But I've read a lot of different recipes and there are tons of different combinations of spices. So this is just my version. Next is a teaspoon of salt. And remember, we already added that half teaspoon of salt to the oats, so the oats are kind of nicely seasoned already. A full teaspoon of ground coriander and a half teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I often grind my own nutmeg from, you know, the nutmeg seed or whatever it is, but I'm not doing that this time. <laughs> okay, and then just give it a really, really good mix. And at this point you can taste it because there's no meat in here. There's no, nothing to worry about. You can just taste it. It's not gonna taste exactly how it's gonna be because the onions haven't cooked yet and everything hasn't cooked together, but you can kind of get a sense of like the salt levels and the pepper levels. And if you feel the need to add anything else, you totally can. I've seen recipes with dried thyme, which is interesting. I've seen a few recipes with allspice but um, this, this one, when I open this one up, it smells exactly like haggis, the haggis that I know and love. So that's what I like. I will say if you're using brown rice in here, because brown rice is whole and steel cut oats are cut, I do give the brown rice a little blitz in the food processor as well, just to kind of break it up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take a little taste and ignore the raw onion flavor. Mmm, mmm, it already tastes so good. Okay, next I'm just gonna transfer it into a heat proof container. The important thing with this container is that it fits inside of a large pot that you have because we're going to be cooking this in a kind of double boiler kind of fashion. So this might be the wrong size for the haggis, but it's what I've got, so I'm using it. You could cook this in a number of ways. You could actually roll it into a tube in like saran wrap and foil and, and simmer it that way if you feel comfortable eating food that's been cooked in plastic. I'm always kind of weird about that, but then again, there is sous vide, which is all cooked in plastic. You could probably sous vide this, by the way. I'm just gonna use this dish, works for me. Pack it in, look at that, so nice. I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap. I don't have a tight fitting lid, but I think if you did have a tight fitting lid, you could probably use that instead of doing it this way. A little bit less wasteful. And then a bit of foil on top of that. And 
and wrap it really, really tightly because you don't want any moisture getting inside. If you're a wizard at simmering things inside of your Instant Pot, I know that it's possible to cook things like this. I just don't know how to do that because I've never experimented with it. So I have the Instant Pot rack thingy or a small rack that I'm putting in the bottom. And then I'm gonna take my haggis, put it on top, and then I'm gonna fill the pot with about an inch of water just enough so that it kind of comes up to the rack. And then I'm gonna put this whole thing on the stove with a lid on. I'm gonna bring the water to a boil and then reduce the heat to low until I can see just barely a bubble. And then I'm gonna simmer it that way for two hours. And then the haggis will be done. All right. When the haggis is done, it's gonna be really firm and set almost like leftover porridge or polenta. And it's really sliceable. I can just kind of slice in here. Sorry about the knife on bowl action. You'll see that it kind of comes out in like a slice format pretty easily. So you can either eat the haggis when it's freshly cooked after the two hours in the double boiler, you can just scoop it onto your plate bit of whiskey sauce, bit of mashed potatoes and turnips, or you can chill it like this, cut it into slabs or slices, or just like shape it into little patties, like a little haggis burger. And then you can put them on your breakfast sandwiches. So for me this morning, I took a slice of this haggis and put it on my griddle. You have to be really patient with cooking it because it does take a while to get crispy. And then I fried an egg and I toasted up a buttered potato roll and put a little brown sauce on it and dream, dream breakfast, I'm telling you. For me, anyway, it's, it's just, it's my cup of tea. I don't know about you. Um, but I also love to take this haggis and fry it as well, make it really crispy. It's really, really good when it's crispy and put it on a piece of toast and melt some cheese over top. And you can also make like a shepherd's pie type thing where you take haggis, crumble it up, add in some cooked peas and carrots, and then put mashed potatoes or sweet potatoes or turnips or a combination on top and bake it like that. So, so nice. I hope I've given you some inspiration to try making your own vegetarian haggis. I think it's a really good place to start if you've never had haggis before, or if you are curious about it, or if you love haggis, but you don't eat meat. I think that these are all good reasons to try this recipe. <laughs> Thanks so much for making haggis with me today. Happy holidays and I'll see you next week.